Uh, hi, uh, welcome to this uh, brief tutorial on the counting equation plus a brief look at debits and credits and this is all a quick introduction to accounting fundamentals. This is what we're going to cover today. We're going to have a look at the accounting equation. Then we're going to have a look at double entry accounting. Uh, we're going to have a look at what the accounting equation measures and then specifically we'll talk about assets, liabilities, equity, debits, credits, and then we'll go through a few example transactions where we wrap up uh, all the content of the tutorial and put it together in some real-world applications. Alrighty, uh, the accounting equation. Uh, this is the equation. It is A equals L plus E. Or in other words, assets equals liabilities plus equity. And we've got to remember that accounting is about measurement. So the accounting equation, the accounting equation measures the assets and the liabilities and the equity. It's about the, the measurement of those three aspects of a business. And uh, the accounting equation must always balance. Uh, this is linked to double entry accounting, which we'll talk about soon. Um, but it, it can never it can never not balance. If, if if the accounting equation ever doesn't balance, it means there's been a technical error in your uh, accounting uh, process. Um, it's actually also a good. Uh, it's a good way to check up that you've done everything correctly. Um, it's kind of like a like a self check. Um, you can tell you can tell if you've done most of the things correct if the accounting equation balance. Or uh, in, on the flip side, if something doesn't balance, it's a quick way to see that um, something's messed up somewhere along the way. So it can be very helpful. Um, yeah, I guess if if you're studying an exam and the accounting equation doesn't doesn't balance, or the accounting equation does balance, then you can have a bit of confidence that you um are on the right track. All right, uh, double entry accounting. Uh, this this is intertwined uh, with uh, the accounting equation. And, uh, double entry accounting. Um, the history dates back to the 15th century. Um, it was a, I think, an Italian monk or Italian Jesuit priest um, wrote a number of um, uh, very important documents, and one of them uh, start, one of them formulated the, the beginnings of double entry accounting. Um, uh, but more importantly, uh, for our for our tutorial, uh, double entry accounting is about measurement. Um, it's about a system to record or measure business transactions. Um, okay, so e every transaction will impact the accounting equation at least twice, hence the term double entry, and this is why they're both intertwined. So you record transactions using double entry accounting, and you record those transactions uh, by impacting on the accounting equation at least twice. And um, by impacting it twice, it allows you to always keep the accounting equation to remain balanced. And it must remain balanced. You got it. That that that's that, that that's that's uh, lesson number one. Lesson number one a point one one one. Um, you you've got to understand the accounting equation must always balance. All right, double entry accounting. Um, the impact on the accounting equation. Remember, the accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus equity, and it does this via debits and credits. And uh, debits and credits are. Uh, two impacts on the accounting equation and um, we'll look specifically um, these a little bit later but just keep that in mind for the time being. Alright so uh, what the equation measures okay um, I've mentioned this before but accounting is about measurement uh, and the equation measures the mm, gotta love those beeps I'm sorry if you heard that uh, the equation measures the resources controlled by the entity as well as the claims on those resources, and that's what we're talking. That's what we're talking about in the accounting equation. Uh, so we have assets, liabilities, and equity. And the left-hand side, which are the assets, are the resources of the entity. And the right-hand side, the liabilities and the equity, are the claims on those resources. And uh, just deeper into that, um, liabilities are the external claims. So uh, claims for the resources from those outside of the company or outside of the ownership structure of the company and equity are the internal claims on the resources. So equity are, are the claims that the business has on itself or the owners of the business has on the assets. OK, 
Okay, so let's uh, let's look a bit deeper into the accounting, into um, the aspects of the accounting equation. So the assets, which is the left-hand side of the accounting equation, uh, these are the resources, and they're the resources controlled by the entity as a as a result of a past event in the business's life, and the value of the asset can be reliably measured. And most importantly, or not most important, they're all very important, but um, it'll help you understand that this, and they lead to an inflow of economic resources. In other words, assets cause income to be generated. Assets bring money into the business. It leads to an inflow of economic resources. All right, um, if those four requirements or three or four requirements are a bit complex, just think about it like this. This is this is this. It's simply these are the assets of the things that the entity owns. That's not that's not the technical legal specific definition, but just to begin with, assets are the things that the company owns, and they're very often income generating side of the business. And uh, some examples: uh, cash, so just money you have in the bank, uh, accounts receivable, so. Um, uh, bills, that, invoices that are people going to pay um, towards you. So you've done a service, you provided an invoice and it sits in accounts receivable until you receive the cash. Or also things like buildings and property plan and equipment. So more long-term assets that um, uh, overall do generate an income because you're running your business out of that building perhaps. Okay, so let's move on to liabilities, and this is the beginning of the right-hand side, and these are obligations. They're obligations caused by a past event. They're obligations where their value can be reliably measured, and once again, uh, they lead to an, not once again, but the flip side, the liabilities are obligations that lead to an outflow of economic resources. So while assets brought money in, liabilities cause money to go out. Uh, in the future. Alrighty, um, if, that, if that's more too complex again for you again, or you want to just start slowly, uh, simply liabilities are things that the entity owes. So they're like debts to creditors and things like that. Uh, they're external claims on the assets. So they're the obligations to outsiders paid from the assets. Now some examples of liabilities are accounts payable. Accounts payable is just the opposite of accounts receivable. So accounts payable are bills you have to pay in the operation of your business, or perhaps more a long-term uh, liability, which is a bank loan, um, and you owe money to a bank or some sort of finance company. All right, the other side of the right-hand side is equity, and uh, this this is a bit of a the best way of looking at it is it's what's left over for the owners of the business, whether that's like a sole trader or an individual businessman or a partnership or uh, even uh, the shareholders of a company. It's the residual interest in assets once all liabilities are paid off. Um, and if you rearrange the accounting equations, remember we had assets equals liabilities plus equity. If you rearrange that equation, you can have assets minus liabilities equals equity. So equity is what remains after you subtract liabilities from assets. In theory, if a business sold all of its assets, paid off all of its liabilities and had a sum of cash remaining, then that will, that's what the equity would be in the business and that would go to the owners of the business. So equities are internal or insider claims on the assets. Uh, that is shareholders or individual owners of the business, depending on the company size. Uh, you'll also find that the complexity of the equity accounts is often dependent on entity size and the structure of the business. So uh, more um, small businesses uh, with a less complex structure might have only uh, owner's equity and retained earnings in their equity section. Um, while more complex or larger businesses, such as those listed on stock exchanges, might have share capital, preference shares, reserves, and maybe even a few other things, as well as retained earnings and so forth. If you want to get some real-world examples, you can jump onto Google Finance, have a look at a balance sheet of a listed entity, and have a look at their equity section and see what they have. 
or on the smallest scale, if you're a small business owner now or you have access to uh, small business accounting software, uh, pull up a balance sheet uh, in the report section and have a look at the accounts that uh, sit in your equity section. All right, this is just a quick side note. Um, in accounting, you'll very often hear about revenues and expenses. And revenues and expenses don't actually fit sim- uh, directly inside the accounting equation. So there's assets, liabilities, and equity, and they're all balance sheet items, while revenue and expenses are profit and loss statement or income statement items. But technically, the revenue expenses do fit inside the accounting equation. They're, they're equity accounts. So a revenue is a credit to equity and an expense are debits to equity. Now, we're going to come to credits and debits in a second, but just keep that in mind, that revenue and expenses do affect uh, the accounting equation. They affect them through the equity accounts. Okay, here's a bit of accounting and business logic. All assets are funded via liabilities or equity. You will not find a single asset on planet Earth that hasn't been funded via a liability or via equity. Um, it's part of the beauty of the accounting equation. The, um, the simplicity in its comprehensiveness to cover such a vast array of transactions and situations, it, it, it's stunning. It's stunning in it's such a simple little equation. But anyway... All right, so all assets are either funded via a liability or an equity. You receive this funding, you purchase an asset, and then assets generate income which itself boosts asset levels. That sounds a bit, that sounds a bit um, confusing. You have these assets. If you manage a business well, these assets would generate sales revenue on one hand, and cash on the other hand, or other some sort of asset that, that's valuable on as, as the balance of the accounting equation. So efficient or good management of a business will turn one level of assets into a higher level of assets. And then this higher level of assets then becomes the return to the claimants or the return to the people who funded the assets in the first place. Either the external claims, i.e. you pay back the creditors, their interest, or the internal um, claimants, and you pay back the shareholders, their investment. All right, let's let's move on to debits and credits. And remember, this is intertwined with the accounting equation. And we have to remember that assets equals liabilities plus equity. And that equation must always balance. And we have to remember that we use double entry accounting to record all transactions and that these transactions impact the accounting equation. So how then do we record these transactions within the accounting equation? And the answer is through debits and credits. Uh, Debits and credits, um, debits is short. Short for is uh, abbreviated to DR and credits is abbreviated to uh, CR. Um, DR and CR is uh, based on a uh, definition from Latin, hence that's why that's why debit isn't DE <laughs> and credit isn't CR. <laughs> that that uh, that bugged me for a few years. I couldn't work out why credit was CR and debit wasn't DE. There's no R in debit, but. Uh, it's based on a it's on a Latin translation or a Latin word, um, but uh, debits and credits are. It's kind of like the it's kind of like it's kind of like the code uh, of accounting. Um, it, it's like a language to accounting. Uh, the the better you become at accounting, like you'll learn debits and credits on the back of your hand. You'll you'll start you'll start you'll start doing debits and credit uh, journal entries in, in your head. But um, anytime, anytime you uh, buy something from a shop or see something on the street. All right. Anyway. All right. So debits and credits. Every transaction is broken down into a set of debits and credits. So that's every business transactions. And the key is the debits value must always equal the credits value. That 
that that rule allows the Quran equation to always balance as well. So you look at a transaction, you break it down into its corresponding debits and credits, which we'll go into later, just, just bear with me for now. And then these debit values, financial values, must always balance with the credit financial values. It'll, it'll make sense. It's com- Hopefully it's coming together, but you'll just, just bear with me for a second. Okay, so a debit represents an increase in an asset. Or correspondingly, a debit represents a decrease in liabilities or equity. All right, and just remember, there's a flip side. See, see how they're the inverse. So they have the opposite effect on either side of the equation. So don't be, um, don't, don't get confused and thinking a debit always means an increase, or a credit always means an increase or a decrease, or one always means the other. Um, let's go on to the next thing. All right, a credit. So a credit is the opposite, and again. Note, there is the opposite effect either side of the equation, so it's the same as the debit. But this time, a credit represents a decrease in assets, or a credit represents an increase in liabilities or equity. And if you have a look, hopefully this is, um, you've seen this already, but the impact of a credit is the exact opposite of a debit. They're, they're, they're a mirror image. Right, and here's a recap. Um, if you have access to this uh, lesson and you want to have a look and you get a little bit confused, this one slide might help you out. So uh, debits are uh, increases in assets or decreases in liabilities or equity. Credits are decreases in assets or increases in liabilities or equity. And uh, hopefully the arrows, I was doing a bit of a doing a bit of graphic design with my PowerPoint slide, with my not PowerPoint, with my keynote slides. I hope, I hope that's a bit easier. All right, so here we go. When in business and a transaction occurs, we have to look underneath and try and find at least, we have to try and find um, the impacts on the accounting equation. And there's always going to be at least two impacts on the accounting equation. Uh, we'll start with two and then we'll branch out from there. And you got to... When you see a business transaction or you undertake a business transaction, you have to have a look. Now, does an asset change? Does a liability change? Does, does equity change? Is an asset increasing? If the asset is increasing, that will be a debit to assets. Is a liability decreasing? In that case, it would be a debit to liabilities. Does, does, equity, does equity increase? And that would be a credit to equity. So... When to understand assets, liabilities, and equity, and their corresponding debits and credits, you should be able to translate every single transaction ever gone on into the into the accounting equation through debits and credits. And that's what I meant earlier. By you'll, once you get the hang of this stuff, it becomes second nature, and you'll, you you can tell stories. Um, you can tell chronological stories about business activity through debits and credits. And it's often what you'll do. It's often what you'll do is you, um, as you're in an accounting degree, you'll you'll be doing more and more complex debits and credits through journal entries. Okay, so you look at the accounting transaction, you have all what's going underneath, and then you record the entry like this. This is a this is a uh, journal entry. Uh, debits are recorded first, so you have the debit flush to the left hand side. You put DR, or which is debit for short. Uh, followed by the account that you're debiting, uh, followed by financial value. And then with credits, uh, they're recorded below the debit, they're at the bottom, and they have the same formatting, except notice that the credits you indent a bit, like you tab you tab once or twice, and you always, and you generally indent it. Um, it it's just, it's, again, I don't want to bring up, uh, like, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, um, when you're learning how to program, and they and they tell you how to use that, and they tell you how to to uh, indent uh, particular bits of code when you're typing inside brackets and so forth. Um, it's it's just it's for visual. It doesn't serve any functionality other than making it reading it easier. Um, but it's that's the way it's done, and just get, yeah, it's the way it's always been done. The way it probably always will be. So just just get used to the indent. Okay, let's. 
that's basically all the theory. Now, let's go through a couple of quick examples. We've got three examples here. The first two aren't too tricky, and then the third one uh, is a little bit harder. All right, so example one. All right, we have the accounting equation before the transaction. So we've got assets equals liabilities plus equity. The assets are 200, the liabilities are 50, and the equity is 150. See how the, see how the equation balances? Okay. All right, so we have a transaction, and a business person buys $75 worth of inventory on credit. So that's the business transaction. So what do we do? We've got the double entry accounting, and we've got the journal entry. So um, we've purchased inventory, and inventory is an asset, and assets are going up. So we debit inventory, because we're debiting an asset of $75. And we're purchasing the inventory on credit. So credit is a liability or accounts payable or a liability. So we credit accounts payable, $75. And then we look at the accounting equation after the transaction. Our assets have gone up by 75 to 75. Our liabilities have gone up by 75 to 125 and our equity remains the same at 150. And do you notice how using a balanced debits and credits and the particular debit and credit rules, our accounting equation balances? All right, so that's the first example. Let's have a, let's, let's run through another one. All right, so we've got the accounting equation before, well, 400, 210, and 190. The transaction, okay. So a bookkeeper. A bookkeeper earns $120 worth of service revenue and is paid cash immediately. So before we flip over, just, just do it in your head for a second. Let's, let's look at the easy one. So they're paid cash immediately. So the bookkeeper is paid cash. Now, cash is an asset, so they're paid 120 in cash. So what would we would probably do? We'd probably debit an asset 120. And then when a bookkeeper earns service revenue, so that's like sales revenue or service revenue. And remember, remember before I, that little note, I talked about how um, uh, revenue was part of equity. And uh, if revenue is going up, and uh, I mentioned the rule before, and equi- that would mean equity is going up, so to be a credit. So let's have a look at this. So we've got the double entry accounting journal entry, and here we go. We've got debit cash, debit and asset 120, and credit equity, credit sales revenue 120. And if we look at our accounting equation after the transaction, we've got now we've got assets 520, liabilities 210, and equity is going up 120. So once again, it balances out exactly the same. So remember at the very beginning I said, um, if it doesn't balance, you've done something wrong. See, as I was doing these slides, I could always check that um, I wasn't making a mistake in, as I was transposing the slides because I could I have a, I have a self-checking system that always balances. Uh, you often find there's not there's not too many fields of study or or fields of um fields of practice where you have an inbuilt you have an inbuilt way of checking that you're doing the right thing immediately like that sort of immediate feedback about whether you're doing the right thing it's, it's, it's kind of handy especially if someone like me doesn't enjoy maths too much um, okay here, here's the tricky one uh, example three accounting equation before the transaction assets of 150 liabilities of 110 and equity of 40 and here's the transaction a book retailer buys a new book kiosk that's going to be at the mall for $140 and pays $80 cash and will pay the other $60 in 45 days. So they're a, they're a book salesperson and they've bought like a kiosk to sell their books that's going to sit at the mall. So they've got a place to sell more of their books at the mall and they've purchased for $140. They've paid $80 cash and the other $60 in 45 days. Now... If I've done this tutorial well, you should be able to w- work out what's going on there. There's just one slight little trick. So have a think about it and we'll, as my sliding machine comes across, there we go, turn the page. And here's um, the double entry accounting journal entry. So we've got, um, we've purchased a kiosk at the mall. So that's an asset. That's our uh, I've got that PPE. I made it a bit more complicated. Um, PPE in accounting stands for property, plant, and equipment. So PPE stands for uh, um, generally buildings and uh, 
machinery and equipment that goes into running your business. It's, it's, a, it's a catch-all abbreviation for a whole bunch of things, and, and a kiosk and a mall would fall into property plan and equipment. So we've debited PPE, or the kiosk, which is an asset. It's like the building asset that I mentioned in the examples, and we've debited that 140 so hopefully that one wasn't too tricky. Now, we've credited cash. Um, that one... That's an asset going down. So hopefully that's not too tricky. But we've de- we've made it, we've debited an asset, and we've also credited an asset, and that's just a little bit. That's a little bit tricky. So with the accounting equation, you can you don't if 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 you touch one part of the accounting equation, it doesn't mean you have to touch the other part. You can you can um you can have one part. You can have a debit going up in one part of it, like a debit and asset and credit and asset. There's nothing wrong with that. So that was that was the way I was going to try and trick you up by debiting an asset and crediting an asset at the same time. Um, the other part I was trying to trick you up is that, remember I said it, um, uh, it impacts the accounting equation at least twice. It's not only twice. It can be very many. I've seen, I've seen really complicated journal entries and this time it affects debits once and credits twice because he's paying... He's paying for part of the hundred and forty dollars now, uh, with cash with eighty, and he's paying uh, sixty dollars in forty five days time. So that'd be um, accounts payable, which is a liability, and that's going up sixty dollars. So um, see, so yeah. and if you have a look at that, if you have a look at our journal entry, where I said the debits might equal the credits. Our debits are one hundred and forty, and our credits are eighty plus sixty, one hundred and forty. So that rule holds. And now let's look at our accounting equation. We got assets two ten. Liabilities 170 and equity 40, and once again, our accounting equation balances. Um, if you if you nail my tricky one and and you're a beginner accountant, then uh, you've done really well, and uh, uh, and give yourself a pat on the back, like seriously, because um, it takes people a while to get this this often. All right. That's about it. Let's conclusion. What did we cover? We talked about the accounting equation quickly. We talked about double entry accounting. We talked about what the accounting equation measures. We uh, delved into assets briefly, liabilities, equity. We spent a bit of time on debits and credits. And then we ran through a few example transactions. And uh, that's about it. Congratulations. We're done. Uh, my name's Axel. Um, if you ever have have any feedback or you want any further support and I can help I, uh, this online teaching stuff uh, I love it um, so uh, always get in touch I, I love to hear from you or offer further support and make, yeah, yeah um, I really enjoy it other than that if you don't want to have any more contact <laughs> I still appreciate your time um, thank you for your time to date and uh, best wishes and I uh, have a lovely uh, day evening or morning cheers